What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be changing the brake shoes on my 350Z and as well as bleeding the brake fluid from the calipers that I just installed a few videos ago. If you guys are new here, hi I'm Macbeth and I drive a 2006 Nissan 350Z and a Rocket Bunny FRS that is slower than my grandmother. So if you guys like content like this, don't forget to subscribe so you guys can see more and I almost just tripped. Let's get on to the video. This video is going to be sponsored by Amazing. If you guys don't know about this company, this is a car starter. It's a USB charger and I'm going to show you how it works because I need to start the FRS in order to get the Z inside the garage because it's in the way. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this bad boy here. So with the email that they sent me, they said that this starter pack can start your car without the car battery in it. I don't have a lot of time today to showcase that to you guys, but I thought that it was a really cool thing that this could do. Just so you guys can see the FRS is yep she's dead so okay and now we're just gonna press the power on button this jump starter pack can start any 12 volt battery and can be charged by using a usb cable not only is the starter pack useful with your car, but you can use it as a flashlight and connect two devices and use it as a power bank. Use code 29AMAZING20 for monies off your order. making this video because the Z almost went into the middle of the street and if it wasn't for the landscaping that I have in my house the car would have just kept going straight but I have a bunch of little hills on my grass and the car just didn't keep going so what happened was I was in first gear and I don't know why I forgot I just forgot so now that you got the wheel off you're gonna go ahead and take off the caliper and the mounting bracket and then remove your rotor so that you can access your brake shoes will you just look at it will you look at it look it came out so, a uh, boom. Some of you guys are probably wondering, Beth, what did you do so wrong that you had to make a video about it? Let me explain. <laughs> when I got the R1 concept rotors, I was excited. I was like, yeah, this is going to be easy, no problem. And I ran into a problem with putting the rotor in. Not R1's fault, my fault, because I didn't know about brake shoes. I've never had to deal with brake shoes in the past. Eh. I've never had to deal with brake shoes in the past, so I didn't know that those had to be adjusted. I didn't know that the handbrake had to be pulled down. When you're doing the rotors on your 350Z, you need to make sure that the e-brake is down. That way you can take off your rotors easily. I didn't do that. I did a very bad thing and I forced them in. And I'm gonna show you guys a clip of exactly what I did. There you go, it's in baby. Yeah, so um, needless to say, a lot of you guys helped me out in the comments and you told me that I messed up. So I went ahead and I took off the rotor and yes, it was broken. It was shattered. That brake shoe was long gone. I had no choice but to remove everything all over again and go to Advanced Auto Parts and get some parts. These are all the parts that I'm going to need for this installation. Everything I bought was at Advanced Auto Parts. So I'm going to leave the link down below where you guys can go get these brake shoes and also the hardware that goes with these brake shoes. Also, you'll need a flathead and you'll need a pick. Start off with the top spring and I don't know if this is going to work alone, but we'll try. Got it. Like that. And then we are going to twist the adjuster and try and get it off, but you can always do the bottom spring first. Here I just took off the adjuster and I'm going to place it to the side and start working on the pins. These pins are both on the left and right side and this is what pretty much holds the brake shoe together. So you're going to want to go ahead and just move the hub if it's in the way and use a flathead screwdriver to push in and twist at a 90 degree angle and just plop it out and it should come out very easily. Get out. Right side down. And that's how you semi take off <laughs> brake shoes. 
just going in with a wire brush. I'm making sure that all the contact points that the brake shoe um, connects to is nice and clean and, and doesn't have any debris on it. And I'm also going to go ahead and use some brake cleaner so I can just spray this all over the place and make sure that everything is nice and clean before we put everything back together. The hardware kit that I got to install the brake shoes came with white lithium grease and I'm going to go ahead and place some on the little raised bumps on the hub assembly. Don't forget to grease up this adjuster so you're going to put some on the threads da. and well, no, spread it around like that, maybe that's a lot. Okay, the reason why we're putting grease on this hub assembly is because there are these contact points that are on the sh brake shoes and when you're putting them on, they rest on these points that we put grease on. So you don't want them to make any noise, so that's why we're putting grease on them. You're going to place your brake shoes in this direction, the top being this wide part and the bottom being the smallest part. This small part is going to hook onto your brake cable and it's going to go somewhat like this. That's your brake cable right there. Where the bottom part of your brake shoe is gonna connect like so. It's gonna connect like that. This pin should look something like this. these springs were pretty tough to get in so I suggest using a pick a flathead screwdriver or a pair of pliers to help you out because these are tough now I am placing the adjuster on the brake shoes please make sure to adjust the adjuster please and I'm also adding the top spring as well. So everything looks good. Make sure that everything is nice and tight. And you're gonna go ahead and put on your rotors and then check to see if when you put the e-brake up, the brake shoes go into contact with the drum of your rotor. Adam's gonna go ahead and put the e-brake up while I check to see if the rotor is gonna stay in place. And this, yup. Yeah, it's there. In the hood to the 350Z, you're gonna find this cap right here that says brake fluid. You're gonna open that up, put it to the side, and you're gonna remove the cap to your master cylinder. As you guys can see, it's running low and it also looks pretty dark in there. So we're gonna go ahead and put some breaker fluid in there and fill it up to the middle line right here. And then we're gonna start opening our calipers and draining any air that might be in the brake lines. We are using the Prestone or Prestone dot three breaker fluid. Okay, cool. Presentation. I see the bubbles right there. Did you close it? No. You don't want to fill it all the way to the top. You're going to fill it right here up to where it says max, and then you're just going to close it, and then you're done. So, Adam is going to go ahead and drive the car with me to make sure everything's working properly because. I don't know, I haven't driven stick in a while and he just wants to make sure that everything is good. So I'm gonna take a trip with him and then we're gonna change seats. Oh, sudden stop. That's good. video 
video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you guys want to see more. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.